you say that in the beginning, when you weren't yet qualified to run, that you were running as bandits. As bandits, yes. At the time Rick was in his 20s, I was in my 40s, they were using Rick's age for us to qualify. And that meant we had to run under two hours and 50 minutes. See, that was their way, we think, of getting rid of us. Yeah. They said there's no way a 40-year-old man can push his 20-year-old son in a wheelchair and run under two hours and 50 minutes. We weren't asking for anything special. They told us we had to qualify, and we went out and qualified. So that fall, we went down to Washington, D.C., to the Marine Marathon, which is called the People's Marathon, and anybody can run in this marathon, and they always draw over 15,000 runners. They, I think they had 40,000 this year. So Rick and I went down there, and we ended up running that marathon in two hours, 45 minutes, and 23 seconds, which qualified both Rick and I for the Boston Marathon. Take me back to 1984 when you became an official Boston Marathon runner. What did that feel like? Uh, that just felt so awesome to be able to be out there and, qual and be able to qualify. And at that time, you know, that's when people really started recognizing Rick and I. And, you know, that first year that they were there, nobody had any idea what was coming down the street, you know. And we've got so many friends, it's just unbelievable. So you two went from bandits to beloved. Yeah, it's amazing. Because now with the marathon, you know, they say, you guys are the Boston Marathon. It used to be Bill Rogers and Joan Benoit, and now they're saying it's Team Hoyt. There's more people that go to the marathon, watch us go by, and then they go home to watch us finish it on the TV.